so I'm here with Gary Albright, uh, our conservator. So what do you do in your first steps of a process of evaluating a piece of art? The first thing we do is to examine it um, so that we can see what actually the problems are. And then from that, we'll work on how, how can you deal with those problems. Uh, the examination slows you down so that you notice things that you might not have noticed if you jumped right into a treatment. Mm -hmm. and, and that can help prevent a lot of issues, um, as well as help you see what other issues there might have been that you missed the first time around. So how does a conservator decide on which approach to take during treatment? A lot of that depends on what is the problem uh, in the first place, and then you choose the approach that fits the expectations of the client mm -hmm. at the same time with minimal risk to the object. Mm -hmm. um, one of our principles is that we like to do think treatments that are quote unquote reversible. Um, that, that principle works in theory, not always in practice, but, but it is true that like you use an adhesive, you have to glue something together, you want to be able to take it apart in the future. So you have to take that into account at the same time that you're trying to, to get the outcome that will please the, the customer. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about some of your supplies that you regularly use? Well, sure. You know, like all professions have their supplies. And, and their materials that they like to use, even if they can use cheaper things, they still like to use the more expensive things. <laughs> and a lot of the, what the paper conservators, photograph conservators use is very inexpensive. So we use a lot of brushes, uh, just normal artist brushes, and, and the spatulas. And this is a Teflon spatula, which, which doesn't scratch. So we use that a lot. But as I'm getting older, I tend to need magnification, so I use my, my head loop a lot. Um, probably the, the things that traditionally we like to use are, are these Japanese brushes. Um, in the 60s, 50s, 60s, 1950s, 60s, we started to learn a lot about the Japanese traditions of conservation, mm -hmm. which go back a thousand years or so. And we incorporated their brushes into some of our techniques. And these, we just love using them. And yes, they're expensive, but at the same time, they, they last forever if you take care of them. Mm -hmm. So this one's a water brush. You would dip it in water, it holds a lot of water. So you can brush water on the back of an object if you want. And then this one I use as a paste brush to, to paste up objects if I'm uh, lining them with a paper. Usually that would be a Japanese paper, again that Japanese tradition. Mm -hmm. And the watercolors. We do a lot of in painting because there's often tears or losses and so you need to retouch so that you can uh, match those areas of loss so that they're not so obvious. Mm -hmm. And so the black and white set is for photographs but usually as I as you use it, you find that they're too cool, too blue, black in tone. So you end up mixing other colors with it to tone it down to more brownish. And so then I have to go back into my other Windsor Newton palette and pick out some of the colors. Usually you end up using more like an orange or a yellow to tone it down a little bit. And you can see we like to have messy palettes too, um, again, because very few of the colors that we have to match are the brilliant colors that they originally were. So they're toned down, they're dirty, or whatever. And so we end up using a dirty palette to help us mute those bright colors so that they're going to match better. Mm -hmm. So is this a detail brush? Well, this is probably the brush that I use the most because uh, it's a triple O, Windsor Newton brush. Uh -huh. It pays to get the best brushes you can for it. Mm -hmm. And I use it for like for cracks and tears and things. And and one of the principles of in painting is that you only in paint the areas that of loss. You don't go over the original. And so you need brushes like this that hold a fine point so you can keep the paint right where you want it to be. 
So we do that a lot. And as I said, they last a long time if you protect them, and that includes trying to keep them in their original <laughs> cases and things like that. Yeah.